That's asinine. An arrest warrant for simple battery has been issued for Browns wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. That's asinine. The star NFL receiver Julian Edelman is in trouble with the law after a wild incident in Beverly Hills. That's asinine. Stunning charge, the billionaire owner of the New England Patriots, Robert Kraft, charged with the solicitation of a prostitute. That's asinine. A racism scandal is erupting during the NBA playoffs. That's asinine. And here's four reasons why. So, the, the that's asinine for this week is going to be a aforementioned Jason Whitlock. So, just a brief history on Jason Whitlock. He is a sports writer. Um, originally from Kansas City is where he began writing. I know he played college sports at Ball State. He used to have radio shows 15, 20 years ago. So he's a a black sports writer who has been around for a while, who was involved in the game, never had any professional looks, but was involved collegiately and obviously through high school, um, and has really – has really be, has become a very known sports writer, a very good sports writer, actually, just with horrible opinions. But he, yeah. his ability to write is excellent. Um, and so he's always built him or has recently built himself on controversy. So he's always the one that will take the contrarian view normally against his people or normally against African-Americans, uh, the situation that's in, at hand. He usually goes against that. So this particular case, um, it's a couple of things. A lot of people are are discussing him. He was talking. He basically called, not basically, he called LeBron James a bigot mm-hmm. in an article, um, and then um, laid out his reasons for it. Um, I'll touch on that briefly. But my, I have a, a the main point that I wanted to get to was. The fact that he he came on a radio station on Outkick the Coverage with Clay Travis, I believe his name is Clay Travis. Um, he it's came like on his music star, very it? much so, and he's from here. Um, but he came on there and was and literally said that the Democrats and LeBron James and everything um, were pandering, like they always say, were pandering to the black community. Um, and that they were, and that the Democratic Party was basically out to bring down society, was basically their whole goal was to make everything bad, to make everyone lose money, to make everyone lose their jobs in order to have society outright evil, Um, or not evil, just have society bad. Um, I took that with high offense uh, mainly because it just doesn't make any sense. I don't see what their benefit from everything going to shit for lack of a better term would be. Um, it's so then, stupid because they have the same economic policy. The same you know, economic policy. It's, policy. it's crazy. And then the the thing that they really got Trump me was the Democrat a few years ago. Exactly. The thing that got me was he, he felt the backlash coming, so he, he felt the need to inject the fact that this is not a partisan thing. He says he's not a Democrat. He says he's not a Republican because he does not vote at all. Okay? that He does not vote at all. That he doesn't even the, vote for mayor, right? He doesn't even vote for anything, he says. Not local, not anything. He does not vote. So that that's what really kind of irked me there because that's one of the pet peeves that I have is that yes you have issues you can complain all you would like to do that's fine also voting is a right which means you can choose to do it or you can choose not to I understand that it's your choice that is what makes America beautiful but if you do not vote and have no plans on voting I would appreciate it if you simply refrain from the deep, deep dives into politics, because I understand you have your opinion and you are able to have your opinion. It is an important opinion, as everyone's opinion is important. But when you say your opinion and then then come back and say, I do not vote, that basically tells me that all you are willing to do is express your opinion. And that's fine. You can express your opinion, as I stated before. But what I call expressing your opinion, others might call uh, 
a blowhard. Others might call talking out the side of the neck. Others might call just talking, no action. So um, that's what really irks me with him was the simple fact that he felt, and he's not an idiot. He's a very intellectual individual. Um, he's smart. He, he reads. He's, he's, he's continuing to educate himself. Um, but the simple fact that he would say that just let me know a little bit of insight into how let's just say I'm not going to say that that would be slanderous I'm just going to say how how he truly thinks and how sometimes he doesn't think um, yeah. and then how he has the blinders on to see only certain sides and see those as right and not others as far as I'm concerned he committed libel against LeBron James anyway you're talking about slandering him that is, so that, is, is that is also the thing to call LeBron James a bigot so basically he called LeBron James a bigot and in the article he basically said that because LeBron James chose to speak out on the Jacob Blake shooting prior to all of the information coming out. He said that that was no better than Tucker Carlson doing the same thing with the 17-year-old white boy that shot the two people protesting for Jacob mm -hmm. Blake. So in going on that stance, I don't agree with that either um, because there are rights and there are wrongs it yep. doesn't matter the situation it doesn't matter justification or what it is wrong or it is right if your life is not being threatened it is wrong to take someone else's life it's well, simple as that shouldn't have even been there if you shouldn't have been there not in any case if it's, it's it's just simply wrong to take someone else's life at all times really but if it is if you don't feel your life is threatened it is especially wrong and it's heinous it's not needed there are other options if your life is not threatened so for them to shoot that man seven times in the back when their life was not threatened there, that's the end of the story. I don't need to hear anything else. You can tell me now that he was reaching for a knife, if that's what you say. I don't know how obvious that truth that is, but that's what you say. That's cool. But you found that out after you shot him seven times. You can tell me he had a gun in the car. You can tell me he was had a rap sheet for sexual assault. Whatever this slanders of the information that these Fox News people are throwing out about this situation. None of that matters. None of that matters because at the time, the man had seven shots put into his body. The police officer who shot him was not a threat, was not at a threat. He was not going to lose his life. He was not even going to get harmed. The dude wasn't even fighting him. So to call, to get on LeBron James for basically speaking out and saying he should have waited to find out more information is also uh, uh, asinine statement and lets me know truly how idiotic Jason Whitlock is or what some people feel is how much Jason Whitlock wants to play this card that he is now playing or the role that he is now in which is the Black Will Kane. So that's where I'm at on that point as of now. Um and that's why he is the asinine person of the week, the month, and the last decade, if you really read on what uh, Jason Whitlock has said on articles and in movies and on radio. You know what, D? Uh, when you were talking about you were listening to uh, Jason Whitlock when you were in middle school, my earliest memories of Jason Whitlock was uh, in high school because he would sub in for Jim Rome. And mm -hmm. I was listening to exactly. Jim Rome every day. Exactly. So I remember li listening to him on Jim Rome. And, I mean, that was 20-some-odd years ago. He was so bad, it'd be white dudes from Tennessee calling in. You got to be kidding, man. Upset. What are you talking about, man? <laughs> Upset, bro. You got bro. to be kidding, man. <laughs> okay. Like, he has turned completely. And, honestly, his turn coincided with his financial uprising, with oh, boy, his um, professional success, um, all of that came when he chose to become a heel in this wrestling match. Yep, he did. 
I mean, but, but he but he he was controversial then, kind of. Yes, no, he was he was on the fringe, but he would be controversial. He was basically controversial on all subjects. Uh huh. Um, he did but now not. Now he's anti-black. Now he's anti-black. Now he's anti-black, and he'll tell you he's not. He says that he only talks about black people and the Democrats because that's who he's dealing with and that's who black people deal with. But that's another one of my issues. If you say that you're not political, but you're only talking bad about one side, then that basically accomplishes the politics for the other. So don't say you're not political when you clearly are. And that goes for both sides, not just red or blue. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate you, brother. Thank you for that. That's asinine. Asinine. <laughs> Follow the Garage Department on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Yeah. Tweet, photos, videos. videos. Let me shoot some real quick. Follow me on social media. And subscribe to the Garage Department Radio on YouTube.